Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to break down my editing workflow when it comes to editing party, club, concert type videos. Um, I have some footage here from my last shoot and I'm basically going to edit a one minute Instagram recap. So if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. So the first thing I do is I set the sequence settings, but before you can do that, you have to place a clip on the timeline. So we're just gonna drag it here. I set it at uh, 24 FPS. It makes it look really cinematic, so that's why I do it. So make sure that's at 24. Um, I'm gonna delete this. But basically what I do is I organize my footage. So I place everything in here, but I'll actually change it to list view right here. And what I'll do is right click on the project right here and go to metadata display and search up creation date. Uh, basically, this makes it easy to sort it by the date it was recorded. So I can sort it by like the beginning of the party to the end. And then I'm just gonna highlight all of them and drag it. So now I have all the clips in the right order. The next thing I do is mute the audio because I don't use audio. Um, I actually use an instrumental track or like a song instead of the actual audio. Uh, before I actually drag everything onto here, um, I'm actually gonna right click while selecting all of them, go to modify, interpret footage, and press assume this frame rate and type in like 24 FPS. The reason I wanna do this is because some of the recordings are recorded at 60 FPS and 120 FPS. So they're gonna be automatically slowed down when I place them into the timeline. So you can see this clip was longer than it was before. So this is slow-mo right now. And basically what I do next is I use two shortcuts. I use Q and W. Basically where this playhead is, um, if you press Q, everything before the playhead is deleted. And if you press W, everything after the playhead is deleted. I don't like anything before this or yeah. So I'm gonna press Q up until the point it starts shaking and then press W. So right now I have this. Then I have this. So you can see what that does. Then I have some action footage. So you see where the light comes on? That's where I wanna keep. So I'm gonna press Q and I'm gonna do this for the rest of the footage. So you can see how this is slowed down now too. W. So this drops, so I don't want it to drop. So I'm gonna cut it before it drops. So I don't, I don't press C and then delete it. It takes a little bit too long for that. So I use the shortcuts Q and W. So keep that in mind. So you see when it flashes the color. So a little bit after it flashes the color, I'm gonna delete it. So I want a smooth pen, so something like that. This only has to be a little bit and take in, this is a one minute video, so um, I don't need a lot of, lot of footage. Okay, this is me just walking, I guess. So the flash is important. I'm gonna cut right there. And I'm gonna find a different type of clip. Something like that. Something like this. You just want different type of angles, different type of shots. You don't want everything to be the same. So what will end up happening is I'm gonna rearrange a couple of these. These won't be back to back or else there won't be any diversity in that. Like this is a bad clip. So I'd probably show like two different angles of the same thing. So like this and this, like this is a higher up, like bird's eye view. This is like next to it. So we're gonna, oh, we're back to this. So this is like a more, fast version of the DJ stuff. So I might use this. Hmm. So the DJ is now jumping and stuff. So I'm gonna do it up until this point. So now the faster footage is coming in. Uh, this is a bad shot. So up until this point, 
I just don't want shaky footage. That's the biggest thing. And we're just going to keep going through some of the footage. Um, I think we're almost done. So if I scroll out, yeah, we're like almost halfway done. So we should be good. So this stuff slow-mo. And I was using no gimbal for this type of stuff. Because um, what I feel like with parties is it looks better when it's like authentic and like handheld type of thing. Like shit. Even shaky at times, it looks more authentic. So I got a lot of the same footage. Yeah. So that's a sick type of transition. This was like a light leak, sort of. And then a shake, so I'm gonna delete it. It's a different angle, delete it. Different angle, cut. Different angle, it shakes a little, so I'm gonna cut that, cut. Cut, and we're basically done now. And then I got a slow shutter type of shot. Okay, there you go. So now we have all of these. Basically what I do now is I'm gonna set the boundaries. What I mean by this is I'm gonna set the one minute point. So I'm gonna move my mouse there and I'm gonna press O. So it sets that out. And basically now I have a good idea of how much footage needs to be fit in. So now what I do is I take the uh, rest of the footage. So I'm gonna take most of the end as well because I want to add the logo at the end so that's going to take some time up so let's just leave that little blank spot right there and we're going to just place it on top of each other and so I'm going to play it right now and then you can see sometimes it's too slow so you might want to add other footage so like this and then it flashes right so we might want to move this down here so that acts as like a transition type of thing. So when it flashes, you wanted to cut yet. But first I'm going to find some music. So what I actually do for this type of stuff is I find instrumentals of the top 100 songs. Like I find something that's trending. So I've already used like the box and stuff in previous videos, so I don't want to use that. Um, so we're going to find hip hop actually. Actually, Pop Smoke just passed away, so I think I'm going to use one of his instrumentals. Um, and he has, like, really turnt um, type of uh, party music. So we're going to do Welcome to the Party MP3 Instrumental. RP uh, Pop Smoke. So usually there's a site that has them. So save link as. You can use uh, non-copyright music as well. So I'm going to drag this into here. And then you want to find, like, the heavy hitting parts. So you can see that... The levels at the beginning are kind of slow and because it's a one minute video you want the entire thing to be sort of intense so we're going to move this all the way here so you can see where the beat drops it flashes so uh, i'm going to actually lock this track first and then i'm going to delete the empty sp spot actually you didn't see the light leak right there now we're going to keep pressing w and q so we shorten the clips so it matches on beat. So now I'm actually going to move all this. Um, I'm going to go with a different approach. I'm going to try to match the beat first before I add any additional footage. So you can see how it shakes at the end. I don't like that. So I'm going to delete it.
So when it drops again, so you can see how it shakes. I like that, but I also like the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a clip in between the two. So this is actually part of the same clip, so it doesn't look that good. So that's a sick transition. Yo, this timing's perfect. So you can see that there's a lot of consecutive wide shots. I kind of want to add some variety. So what I'll do later is add some close up shots so that there's no consecutive uh, wide shots. So it gets slower now. So it's fine with like the longer shots. We don't have to do um, shorter shots now. So that's actually perfect. Yeah, I don't think I need any additional clips. Around the 50 second mark, we can just add the logo. And what I like to do with the logo is I like to make it um, kind of scale up a bit. So I'm gonna set it at 44 then make it up to like 52. And I like to end the song before the one minute is up actually. So you can see a boring shot like this can um, actually be spiced up a bit if we scale in these keyframes. Same thing with like these two. Let's do this one first. Maybe even this one. So you can see how it moves very well and it follows the beat. Yeah, it looks terrible. So we'll overlap this with something else. Maybe with this. And we'll zoom in on this one. And they're consecutive, so they don't look good, so. So these are all sort of the same, so I'll move this here and move this here. This might look better if I zoom in as well. Okay, so we're basically done. Now we just have to add color grading and some special effects. So we're gonna make a new adjustment layer. We're gonna place it on top. And I have my own, um, it's called Van Lut. I haven't released it yet, but I would just use like a preset. So you can see this is dark. So basically what we're gonna do now is adjust the individual cliffs that are too dark. Cause this is fine, but this is too dark, right? So we're gonna select on this, increase the shadow. This looks boring too. I don't know, does this move at all? So it does move. Yep, 
yeah, I don't know. It looks weird. So we can zoom this in maybe. Maybe rotate it a bit. So I'm gonna increase the highlights way more. The next thing I'm gonna do is add um, some texture and noise. So I use a pack, um, it's a paid pack by Ezra Cohen. So I'm gonna use his grain and his texture pack. And then I'm gonna add some like static um, and displacement transitions. I'm, I'm gonna link all of them in the description. So we're just gonna place this on top. So this is like a grain overlay and this one's a texture overlay. So we're gonna lighten it. I'm just gonna duplicate it so it stretches over the entire thing. So there you go. Now there's like texture and stuff and dust and overlays. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is add those static transition I was talking about. Those, so I have a bunch of these by uh, Creative Ryan. And then I have some displacement transitions by, I think Creative Ryan as well. Um, so we're gonna just add the static ones. I think the static ones fit better for this one. So I'll just keep it static. So we're gonna just drag them. They have sound as well. So we're just gonna set them all as screen because they're overlays. And we're gonna place them where it makes sense, you know. But what I like to do is like even out the spacing. So what I mean is like, I don't want all of them in the front, like in the beginning. Um, so what I'll do is I'll spread them out. So like one right here, one in the middle, and then one toward the end. We just gotta find the right one. Then one at the end, we want to line it up, sort of. And you can see it's great it's because the overlay, so I'm just going to delete the overlays at the end. The next thing I'm going to do is use YC Imaging's transition packs. Um, so they're just like really, really simple ones. So we're going to place them where the beat drops. So like right here, like around this time. So we're gonna add trail flash, drag it. So you'll see what it does. Like right there, there should be something right there. It's just super, super hard. So we're gonna do up tempo punch. Right there as well, it needs to be something. Even right here, let's do distorted flash. I haven't used this one yet. Right there as well. So you wanna just add a lot of variation with the transitions. You can get any transition pack. Uh, I've just been using this one for a while. Right here. This one's got to zoom in. So we're going to add a transition there because it looks a little bit awkward. Right here as well. And I think we're pretty much done. So yeah, that's about it. That's my workflow. Um, that's how I sort of go about it. it. You know, it's a messy timeline, but it works. But yeah, if you guys want more workflow videos like this, just let me know. Uh, my name is Steven, and I'll see you in the next one.